Hey, this is Nick with another Builder Trend tutorial. And today we're diving into potentially the most important aspect of Builder Trend, which is understanding the homeowner view and knowing that you, as the builder or the remodeler, have the power and the responsibility to edit those permissions and edit the information that goes into there. It's highly customizable. Builder Trend makes it really easy to demo it. So I want you to take a little bit of time to tweak the settings to update things such that you have a customer who's getting a amazing experience from you. They're getting the information they need when they need it and there's less confusion. So I'm going to go into this today, quick hitting video to show you the things that I do within my own business to ensure my customer has the information they need. So getting started with this, we're going to talk about a few specific things. Schedule is the big one. Now this is probably the most used feature within Builder trend from your client's perspective is they're going to look at the schedule almost every single day, right? What's going on and what has shifted. We want to make sure that they're getting the information they need. Not too much, not too little. Make sure that they have it all. Financials, you may or may not choose to share financials with your customer through Builder Trend. If you're doing an open book project, you probably will. And it's important to know that we can customize how that looks for our customer. Specifications, we had a video on that as well. I think it's a really nice little portal that has been added to Builder Trend the last couple of years. I have a video on that if you want to check it out documents, photos as well. But the essence of this entire lesson here is that you are in control of how this experience looks from your homeowner's perspective. And again, Builder Trend makes it so easy to demo it and to see what it's gonna look like. So I want you to be doing that consistently to ask yourself, is this what I think my homeowner should see? Is this, is this the information they need to have a good client experience? So let's get into it with Builder Trend. So I've got a couple um, projects up here that we're gonna play around with, okay, on a couple different screens. I'm gonna try to get the homeowner view over here and then my view behind the scenes over, over here as well. So the first thing I wanna point out is that it's so easy to demo what the homeowner is going to see. So Builder Trend has made this so, so easy. All I have to do is click on this little house over here and it's going to pop open a new tab to be the homepage that the, the homeowner sees. Okay, so that's very, very useful for me to be able to preview that and to see what changes I make on my back end here, how it's going to impact what the homeowner sees. Okay, so first I want to talk about a schedule. Now, a very common issue is that we get a customer who's all excited about Builder Trend. We've done the hard work of convincing them to log in and create their username, and then they go to Builder Trend and they see a schedule and it's completely blank. This is very, very common, and this can happen for two specific reasons, okay? The first is that we haven't given the homeowner access to the schedule at all, okay? So we probably should. I find that this is very, very useful to give my customers access to the schedule. You might not want to for various reasons, but I find transparency is the best policy. So if I go to my homeowners tab under job info here, I'm able to homeowner can view, this is a preference. If I click this down arrow, I'm able to indicate whether or not they can see the full schedule or not, okay? So um, that's going to be important. I can say no items, I can say full schedule, etc. Now I'm gonna come back to this in a second. I'm gonna save and close. So I've indicated that I can see the full schedule, so that should be good, okay? But the problem I have must be elsewhere because the customer can't see anything. And that is typically because our schedule is offline. Okay, so in my scheduling video, I talked about the benefits of turning the schedule offline. We can click and drag things around a little bit easier. Okay, having a schedule offline is a great way to work faster. Okay, to like click and drag something around. Okay, that's very, very useful. But if it's offline, that means the customer can't see it. So I'm usually turning the schedule offline if I have to do a lot of changes, I'm doing some big updates, and I don't wanna send notifications all the time, I'm gonna turn it offline, but I must remember to turn the schedule online if I want my customer to see it. So I'm gonna go ahead and click that button here, I'm gonna get some warnings. I don't have a baseline yet for this project, so I click not now. And now from the homeowner site, what I also love is I, I clicked open the homeowner site on this tab, and now I can just refresh it and play around. I don't have to keep clicking that. Uh, clicking that house. All right, so now we can see the schedule. So that's useful. However, this is kind of the next issue that I see most commonly. This happens to us, honestly, unfortunately, is that we are only, in this case, giving our customer access to see the phases. Okay, and this is a bummer because our phases get drawn out very largely. So if you look at my phases here, this demo and reference might take 141 days. That doesn't mean we're necessarily working for all of those days. This is a common issue when we look at like drywall and paint. So if I were to look at my drywall and paint over here, I've got one day for delivery, I got 10 days to hang it. 
And so I've got, let's see, if I count up all my work days, I got about 25, 26 days. But on the calendar, it shows 49. And that's because there's Slack built into here. Okay, so there's all this time where I'm not doing anything. And if the customer sees just this big blob of drywall and paint of 49 days, it's going to set off some alarms. And they're going to say, hey, it's going to take you 49 days to install drywall, finish it, and paint it? Really? That seems a little bit too crazy. That seems like it's too long. What they're not seeing is that there's this big gap in between where we do our initial paint and when we do our final paint that's drawing it out. So what we should do is we should give our customer access to the full schedule. All right, and that's what I've been doing. So if I go into my project information here and go into the homeowner, go to homeowner can view, and right here, full schedule, yes, but I also want them to see schedule items, not just phases. Now, I wish they could see the phases and the schedule items like we can see here, and they can click and you know collapse it, but that is currently not possible. But if I refresh my homeowner screen over here, you're gonna see that they're able to see um, things a little bit more detail, okay? So they can see that my drywall and paint's not gonna take that long. Now again, what they can't see yet is the, the roll up version of the schedule. That's kind of a bummer. That's probably a little change that I, I would imagine Builder Trend will fix at some point in time, but currently as of this recording, that's not possible. So schedule, if it's not appearing how you want it to, understand that you have control over that and you can edit it either in turning your schedule online or in your information for the job. Okay. The next is financials. Okay. So with the rise in open book projects and showing financials is becoming a thing that more and more builders and remodelers are wanting to do. And Builder Trend has the ability to show your customer a nice, neat schedule. Okay. So do I see it here? No, currently not. So we should always, almost always, I think, have invoices available for your customer to see and to pay. Okay. I think that's important that that happens. All right. But what I would also like them to be able to see is we have, we've done so much work to estimate the project and we've gotten hopefully sign off on that estimate, okay? And then that means we're gonna be tracking to a budget. And the new job costing budget, which I went over in a previous video, is so, so good for understanding what's going on in our project and how we're spending against our, our estimates, okay? And to a certain degree, we probably want to communicate this with our customer. Now, I'm going to have a separate video where I dive into this exact job costing budget in greater, greater detail. This is honestly an area where I've been doing a lot of work in my own business to figure this out. And so I'm going to show you on a separate video really diving deep into this. But let's assume for now we have a strong understanding of the job costing budget, how it works. Do we want to show any of this to our customers? Probably yes. To some degree, we would like to. Okay, again, this is more on an open book uh, project probably. So I'm gonna go to my info here, my job details. And again, I've got it listed as open book. With the homeowner, I have the ability to show some budget. So if I click this button here, it's going to give me some options. I can either show the classic budget format or the new job costing budget format with some column options as well. Let's go with the classic for now. Let me just save this. Once I do, the customer can now log in and see the budget right here, okay? And this is useful, okay? But I honestly think that the job costing budget is a little bit better, okay? Notice that there's really no, uh, there's no price here, okay? And there's no cost to complete or anything. I don't think this is as useful. I think that they're gonna sunset this budget soon. Okay, so the job costing budget to me is a little bit more useful. I'm gonna go ahead and switch to the job costing budget and I'm just gonna leave it all on for now. Let's see what this looks like. If I refresh, now I have job costing budget available. And again, it doesn't look exactly like I see on mine, but it looks close. I'm gonna collapse all my categories. And now you can see we have a little bit more of is it complete or not, revised versus projected, and then the owner pricing is in here, which wasn't before. The owner pricing, Builder Trend is doing a really good job on our job settings. We've indicated our, our profit margin or our, our um, markup, okay? So um, they're able to to take that into account. And that, that happens in options. So here's my percentage markup, okay, 35%. And they also added this cool thing where we can indicate the cost type markup. Now, again, I'm gonna show you this in a separate video where we really dive into the job costing budget. So for now, which is assume this is there, but I have a markup that goes into my revised owner price. Builder Trend's calculating all that for me. It's really, really useful. 
The problem I have with this as a default is that I'm showing my customer way too many columns. Okay, we're gonna need to dumb this down a little bit. And I don't say this with a negative connotation that they can't handle it, but I don't want them to see all that goes into that. What they should care about most is what their price is. Okay, so I'm gonna go into on my left side again, I'm gonna go into homeowners, and I'm gonna look at all the columns that are available here. I'm gonna uncheck them and really start to think about what does my customer wanna see. One thing that I think would be really, really useful is um, is price for sure. Revised owner price versus original owner owner price. Um, amount invoiced, remaining to invoice, percent invoice, that's all useful. Project mar margin, uh, margin, margin and profit, I don't think is that useful to my customer. I don't really wanna have that conversation. Oh, you're making this much, you're making that much. And for that reason, I don't like to put costs in there either. All right, so I'm gonna leave all that as it is and I'm gonna save it. I really only wanna show my customer their price. So I want them to see, here's your original price, here's your revised price, here's the remaining to invoice. I wish it had a calculation, I'm kind of surprised it doesn't, what the difference is. Obviously the customer can do the math and see 764 to minus 735, but I do kind of wish they showed that here. They don't yet, I think again, more changes are coming. But you have the ability to edit this and you certainly should. Okay, so your financials. And again, we're gonna get into job costing budget in a separate video. I'm gonna really dive deep into that for you. Let's move on to the next item, which is specifications. So I have a video specifically on specifications. I'm gonna to go to a different project to demonstrate this. So specifications is a nice, neat area where you can indicate all the stuff you're doing on a project. And I think it's really, really useful. It's, there's not too many bells and whistles, but it's very useful. Um, I'm gonna to go to a different project, right? So I have to go to different owner site here. So different owner site, if I go to my specifications, they show up here, excellent. So keep in mind that these are uh, editable whether or not your customer sees them or not. Okay, so I'm gonna take them all right now, all of these, and I'm going to click share and I'm gonna uncheck owners can view. Okay, and that's gonna take it off. And so now my homeowner logs in, they don't see any. Now I think that your homeowner should see many, many specifications. What I like to do is translate over my proposal, my scope of work to the specifications. So I'm gonna click almost all of these. However, I might have some that I don't necessarily want them to see. It might be for internal use only. For example, my labor markup. I might be taking the resources that I use on a project. I have a cost to them. I have a markup that might be a little bit different than the overall project markup. I might not want them to see that. If that's the case, I'm gonna leave this one off. So what I can do is I want most of these to go over to the homeowner can view. So I'm gonna click all and then uncheck labor markup. And so now I'm gonna click share. Owners can view when they're signed in. Go ahead and do that. Refresh this page and you're good. To go now the customer can log in and see what they need to see on this project okay really really useful the next we will talk about is uh, documents okay so with documents i think that the the trick here is to use folders and to really think about your access levels at a folder level when you're templating out your projects come up with a hierarchy such that the common folders that exist within all of your projects have a similar sharing setup. So what I almost always do is I'll create a folder that is available to everybody. Anybody who is available in Builder Trend, whether it's a subcontractor or the homeowner, an architect slash designer folder, everything goes in there. Everybody can view it. That is full on. Then I'll have a client shared folder. Within this, it's only ourselves and the client who can view these files. This is contract information. This is um, capital improvement forms. This might be bank information if they're working with a bank. And then lastly, I have Oakvale internal or whatever your company is internal. And this, you can see no access at all for anybody else. This is just for us. Now, Builder Trend is gonna do some amazing work of automatically attaching documents here or having owner uploaded files here as well. So it's, it's good. Keep it simple at this level. Have your access levels by folder. And then within these folders, I wouldn't do too much else when it comes to um, new, new items at all. Okay, so new access levels that is, okay? Have everything at the folder level available, okay? Now what I would do in a client shared situation is I would give the client some specific folders to work in. Okay, so maybe I have my contract information. Maybe I'm requesting from them a, um, maybe I'm requesting from them a, let's see, um, inspiration. Okay, so maybe I have a general inspiration folder. Okay, and it's available because of where it is. 
um, you know, save and go to. And then within that inspiration, why don't I create another folder for exterior inspiration? And then I can have another folder for uh, kitchen inspiration, okay? And then we can tell the customer, hey, go to your inspiration folder and start uploading photos and that's gonna really help us understand what we have to do, okay? Now, same thing when it comes to photos, okay? So you can establish whether or not your customer has access to your photos. Now, a lot of this is gonna happen whether or not they're attached to an item that is accessible by your customer. But notice here, most photos, almost all photos, I'm going to include that the owner can see. There's almost no situation where a photo that I take on the project, I don't want the owner to say, see, after all, it is their project. So with photos, with videos, definitely think about your setup, but I also like to have an owner added photos for them to add their own as well, okay? That is generally really, really useful. So again, from the from the owner side of things, going over to my right here, I got my files, my documents, I can see that I have all right, here's my client shared folder. That's where Oakvale's told me to go. Here's my inspiration. I can go here and upload full, uh, photos as I need to, all right? And by the way, on that note, one little thing that I kind of missed, I believe, client shared inspiration. Okay, with this, I need to folder info. Okay, viewing permission, owner, that's good. And yeah, what we need to do actually, it's on our settings. So uh, Builder Trend made this adjustment. So in file settings, you need to indicate auto create folder for subs, vendors, and owners to upload docs, all right? So that's a thing currently, which is kind of annoying, but that's gonna give this owner uploaded files. And with that, when the customer goes to their files, they're going to be able to upload only here, which is kind of a bummer. So you need to then transfer it over, which is, I think, again, something they're working on adjusting. But the viewing is the most important thing. Most of the file work that's gonna happen is gonna come from your end or from architects, designers, et cetera, from internal users. So you're gonna to wanna to have that set up perfectly so that when they log in, they have viewing permissions for the right files, all right? The biggest takeaway from this entire thing is I want you to get used to trialing out your homeowner portal, okay? I want you to get used to that, to understand how it looks, to understand what you can do to make edits to the whole setup as well, because ultimately this is the, the really important part of your client experience. This is what they're logging into to see what's going on with their project. And if information's confusing, it doesn't really look right, or they're questioning it, if it leads to more questions than answers, then you have quite a big problem. And I think the schedule is a big one, obviously the financials, the specifications, and the files, all right? A lot more coming with Builder Trend. I wanna keep getting your questions and comments here, because I have a lot more to share, and whatever you ask, it's gonna kinda of drive me in the right directions here. Check out all the information we have on the entire YouTube playlist and everything that we've been doing. Check out all of our previous videos and please feed me information that, that will help drive the next one. I'll see you on the next video.